So before we get into the New York law and its implications specifically, can you talk a little bit about NACDS and what work the association has been doing during the COVID-19 pandemic? Absolutely. Well, you know, NACDS, we represent, you know, over uh, thousands and thousands of stores across America. And actually there we have actually stores in every community and Americas live within five miles of one of our stores. And we have been really working very hard and very diligently throughout this pandemic to ensure that the communities are actually are, are able to stay healthy and be able to have the, the necessary treatments they need, whether we're talking about COVID directly or we're talking about chronic care uh, for illnesses such as diabetes or hypertension. So we have been there every step of the way for our communities, and uh, we couldn't thank our healthcare professionals and our teams. Um, you know, just uh, can't even thank them enough. They've been such great heroes to being on the front line during the COVID uh, pandemic here. Should we expect similar low numbers of vaccinations that we've been recently seeing for the COVID-19 vaccine, or since it is a new one and the, va the pandemic is still happening when the COVID-19 vaccine is available, um, will we see higher rates of vaccination for that? I mean, everyone has different speculations, but I, I believe that we're going to see a surge in flu vaccine this year. I think because everyone's realizing there's a big crossover between the flu and COVID, and also the implications of having both at the same time would not be good. And so I think people are realizing that uh, they definitely need to get their flu vaccine this year. At the same time, I also I think they realize um, that they're going to need to get their COVID-19 vaccine. And that way they can not only help themselves and their families, but also their communities. It's important that everyone get their vaccine. And so you mentioned that pharmacists are willing and able to expand their resources to provide this testing. And studies have confirmed this as well. Um, but there's also longstanding barriers such as reimbursements and need for DIR reform. Um, that put a lot of burden on pharmacies and make it difficult to meet these demands. And the NACDS mentioned operational flexibilities in that press release as well um, in order to address an expectedly compressed and early flu season. So what are some of the challenges or barriers that may be standing in the way of being able to effectively care for their patients in a pandemic? Those are all very good points. And so at the end of the day, we need to have, uh, we need to be able to have access and we need to have reimbursement to make sure that these are sustainable business models and sustainable public health models as well. And so we are working with the federal government as well as the states to ensure that everyone will have access to the vaccines. So again, you know, the COVID-19 actually has shown, a, um, really put a spotlight on social vulnerable populations and medically underserved communities. And so we need to make sure that, you know, that those that need these vaccines the most are actually have the ability to get them and they get them quickly and that allows for the distribution of those. So everyone needs to be a little bit more innovative in terms of uh, looking at how we can all work together. The private public partnerships can work together, whether it's the health insurers of government and, and any third party payers like Medicaid to ensure that there's reimbursement there, sufficient reimbursement to cover the costs for these programs, which is absolutely key so that we can deliver these across the nation from the most urban settings to the, to the most extensive rural settings. So very important that we get this reimbursement concept down, not only for the COVID-19 vaccine, but also fix it also for the testing as well, the COVID testing situations. And then I realize this is the million dollar question, but when would you expect to see a vaccine become available to the public? <laughs> I think that's a great question, and I think the only um, individuals that can probably answer that uh, with um, definitively would probably be um, individuals like uh, uh, Mr. Fauci, you know, Dr. Fauci and others. But I do believe that there's a lot of great uh, work being done in the vaccination space. Uh, a lot of um, companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies have jumped in and are really moving. It's, this is a global pandemic and everyone's trying to help solve the problem. I do believe we are going to see vaccines in uh, phase three trials this, um, this fall, but that will be under an authorized vaccine distribution concept, whether it be through NIH or through an FDA uh, phase three trial. As to a commercial vaccine, we're probably looking at, you know, next year. I think uh, Dr. Fauci uh, said it 
us that he just, from a commercial side, it's going to take a little longer uh, to get it through the fruition. There's a lot of different components like we've learned in the testing world. You need to have the, the syringes, you need to have um, the capability to manufacture these um, enormous quantities. At the same time, you're talking about, again, the globe, uh, population of the globe and everyone, all the countries coming you know, together are wanting the same vaccine at the exact same time. So it's going to be quite challenging and quite complex to get through that maze. But I do believe that we're gonna, it's probably going to be the most accelerated vaccine we've ever seen. And, and that is, that's wonderful and that is promising. And so those are all the questions that I have. Are there any last takeaways that you want our audience to um, take from this interview? that it's also a very essential that we do as we move forward with vaccines and treatments for COVID. We also, we also pay attention to the flu. So as I mentioned, we need to ensure that we have the education for the population for flu, but we also then also need to move into, for those that did not get their, decide not to get their flu vaccine, we also need to ensure that we can do the test to treat for flu uh, in community pharmacies as well. And so that way, if someone does come in with the flu, they were able to get that definitive point of care test. And then um, if it's positive, get that Tamiflu and get them home. Again, we're trying to minimize the spread of the flu and COVID-19, uh, especially for all the vulnerable uh, populations out there. And this is going to be a very, I think a very uh, tight um, flu and COVID season coming up this fall through spring. So everything we can do to uh, prevent the spread and everything we can do to treat whether it's COVID-19 or flu should be done too. And so as more treatments come available for COVID-19, pharmacies also should have the authority and be re reimbursed for those treatments as well. Kathleen Lieger, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much.